Switzerland. Okay, and Ethiopia, they're robusta from there. Anyway, so you might want to go local. And in France, when you drink coffee, it's just a demi there, so the, a teaspoon or two full of uh, espresso. Here, you want two shots, like, okay, I just want espresso, chill, okay? I want latte, grande, like, this is localizing what's European. Like, okay, Europeans just drink this portion, okay? I don't need this much. But that's localization, for example. Okay, so there are different models. They are more complex still, it's, it's not very satisfying, right? Okay, fourth is, who were born in the place where they live now? Raise your hand and work. Okay, one out of two, okay, two out of all of us. Which means maybe we're enculturated in where we were born. We're you know, three agents of socialization, family, school, and place of worship, if you are deist. Okay? If not, strike that out. Family and school. Okay. And, but if you go elsewhere, you travel, you live somewhere else, you work somewhere else, there will be changes. You will get some aspects of the, the place in which you live currently, somehow. You see that, the point? So you change by moving from one place to the other. Like, if you're from the south, you go to the north. Like, can I have some iced tea? Like, is this how Yankee iced tea tastes like? <laughs> no, sure, it's tasteless. <laughs> like, okay, and then if you're from north, it comes up, why is this so sweet? But, and then, after a while, okay, this is how tea is when you go to the south or when you're in the north. That's what, except if you specify, I want sweet iced tea and when you're in the north. Okay, we'll make it just for you, you're weird, but we'll serve you sweet iced tea when you're in the north. So we go through changes, and the Hofstede's model does not do that. And fifth, this is what I'm saying, it's, it's only synchronic, it's not diachronic. It does not do a historical analysis. History shows that there are changes. Okay, the Christians in the time of Jesus and the Christians of today are very different. Today, there's a uh, hundred flowers blooming, right? They're from the extreme right to the extreme left. They all say they're Christians, they have very different views, and they fight over political issues. Okay, so if you do a non-historical view, it's not satisfying because it doesn't reflect the reality a lot. So alternative discourses, I can jump to the conclusion, because these are just details, if you want, or you want to say all of it, we have like 15 minutes. Okay, let me see. Anthropology says it's the material things, a handbag, an umbrella, a necklace, okay, shoes, Prada, and then it's also the thought, okay, the ideas that we develop, like, uh, Killing is what you do when you want to uh, commit an act of revenge with somebody who had uh, offended your family in some cultures. Okay. So that's ideas. And then uh, those are the two main aspects. And then thirdly would be uh, the way of life. How you live, how you eat, how you dress up. Okay. Anthropology would say that changes. Okay, there are two kinds of analysis of anthropology. One, Harrison says you have to focus on the material. So if you look at it from metaphysics, you do a research, you would say this is a materialist uh, ontological study. You look at the things around them. But Clifford Geertz, which is very famous, uses the interpretive and therefore an idealist ontology, way of thinking. Like, we don't care what they use. We just want you to write in your research what they say, how they feel. So it's a very different kind of research. If one you look at the things that they produce using the materialist paradigm, you just look around. Okay, did they have wood? From wood they made these uh, utensils and furniture and house. 
that if you use the idealist paradigm in anthropology, you look at how they think. You don't care what they have. That's secondary. You care about what their expressions are. You say, how do you feel as uh, a photographer when you take a picture? Like, when you see people posting on Facebook those stupid food photos that they take when they go to restaurants, then that would be your research agenda. It's your feeling and thinking. Okay, very different from a materialist and uh, interpretive uh, approach. And then there's the behavior. Aside from the things, okay, and the thinking, it's what they do. Okay, ritual is a big thing when people do study. What's the ritual when you're in school? Well, past the grade, that's one ritual. Maybe on the US, definitely there's an inflation of A's, definitely. I was I studied in France five years, and I got 12 out of 20. That's a system out of 20. I said, this is bad. Why did I get 12 out of 20? My French classmates said, that's normal. You should be happy. It's 12. That's high. Like, OK. That's high. I said, why can't I get 20 out of 20? You're not the professor. You don't know as much as the professor does. Like, OK. And if it's essay, the professor knows. Well, it's not true or false, OK? So yeah, but here, if students don't get A's, I demand an A. Explain yeah. to me why I don't get an A. Right. And, okay, so that's the that's what's expected here. That's the behavior that students get here. Okay, how do you go about changing that, or would you accept that culture? Do do your students accept A's, or do you as students accept expect A? Demand A's. <laughs> there you go. All students expect A. If they have a B, they don't like. Out and like, this professor is bad. <laughs> you get a B. It's the fault of the professor. See, it's so true. Huh? That's the behaviorist approach. Holistic says you have to do all of it. Okay, so the things, uh, the thinking, and the behavior. That's just summary of all of the thinking. On history, you would assume that culture changes. This is to summarize everything. You don't say there's only one culture, but culture changes through time. Just to sum it up, okay? There's some quotation. Cultures is a product of history, and therefore, uh, they change. But, uh, okay, yeah, this is the addition of Dr. Jim Berger. He said, there's a problem though. We cannot just assume history changes, period. It's oftentimes the victors who interpret history. Like, why is most of our books written in he, meaning he and she? Because it was the men who wrote the books. And they say, are, are you stupid? Don't you know he means he or she? And women say, no, it means he. Shut up. We want to change the language. So it's when women came in and said, we don't accept it, that we have to say he or she or we or they. We change the vocabulary. And then the dominant force will always say the others. It's othering, okay? So victors could be the empires, Netherlands, Spain, Portugal, France, Germany too, Japan, China, uh, and also the US was an empire and is still an empire. Right? So it's the standard is us and the others. Okay, this is Dr. Jim said, don't forget, power dictates. It's important element when we do adult education. Don't forget there's a power element in there. Male, okay, and uh, political. And in philosophy, uh, okay, these are maybe the more important things you have to look at. One is, we already saw materialist versus idealist. Uh, there are two interpretations. So when you do your dissertation for the students, uh, you have to make sure, are you a materialist in your perspective or are you an idealist? When you're a materialist, you look at things uh, as you see them, okay? When you do the idealist, you're asking people how they think. But you can do holistic, like if you want to ask the traffic is it women all the time? Mm -hmm. oh, the traffic women, then 
you can look at their condition, that's materialist, and then ask them how they feel. That, that's how you listen, that makes it holistic. So you combine the two. And then when you say dialectical, you ass you're not assuming there's only one, but that they change. Okay, there's there are contending forces at work. Okay, okay, for example, not all traffic women are the same. So you cannot just write a dissertation. This is gen the generalization about traffic women in Cleveland. Maybe you can, but you have to fine tune. But maybe there are at least two opposing views. One says, I'm not really traffic. Yeah, I agree that I'm, I'm not defending this. Or this is hypothetical. I'm, okay, I'm, uh, I'm defending, I'm sorry, I'm not defending. Uh, I am not being traffic because I need the cash. And this person helps me get the customer. And what else do I do? If it's my free will. That's her interpretation. The others would say, yeah, you know, I left home. I had to fight, you know, ch uh, adolescents rebelling with parents. I wanted to be independent. And I'm nowhere, and this guy just grabbed me, and whatever he says, I do. I get 20 bucks, whatever. So you have a general trend. There are traffic women. And then there are two views of their own condition, okay. for example. And then immutable, like all traffic women are like this forever and ever. Maybe that's not very useful. OK, since I have five minutes left, I'm skipping all of these. OK, political economy would say you cannot separate the politics and culture uh, from the economy. They're all related. Okay, why are uh, people, let's say, in a poor country like the Philippines, uh, robbing, corrupt, have dirty streets, and don't take care of their children? Okay, is that uh, because Filipinos are stupid and lazy? I'm criticizing my own culture as an example. I, I have the right to do that. <laughs> okay. Uh, your eyes popped out like, whoa, he's racist. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> You've seen humor. <laughs> OK. Uh, you would look at it. It's because of poverty and exploitation. And therefore, the culture is also they're, they're, they're alienated. Okay. So you look at the relationship of uh, politics, culture, and yeah. So for political economy, this is Harrison. The economic base is the most important factor. It's because of poverty okay, and exploitation. Therefore, you have this type of culture that emerges. That's why people don't care about the garbage. Like, I don't have money. You're talking about recycling the plastic bins. Like, where's the plastic bin? I don't have one. It's the river. I just, where else can I throw my garbage, for example? Okay. In sociology, we're looking at conflict and let me see, conflict and conformity when we talk of culture. Uh, that's why we have what is known as counterculture, alternative culture, and the dominant culture, right? Dominant culture being is it's white male Anglo-Saxon. I'm sorry if you I did not <laughs> say you represent. People get offended. <laughs> okay, white male Anglo-Saxon, Protestant, okay. So, please. That's me, I understand. <laughs> please don't get offended. <laughs> okay, that's dominant culture. And then there's the alternative culture, all kinds, right? Hip hop is to say, I am not white, Anglo Saxon, Protestant, and I'm proud of the way I speak and do things, for example, or gospel, etc., etc. And then you have the LGBT uh, counterculture, etc., etc. And for example, in sociology, so what's our culture when we look at things? Uh, originally, we have religion. Things happen, there's lightning and thunder, there's flood. Oh, I don't know what's going on. I am a caveman, and oh, it must be God, no? And then a time came, like Plato and Aristotle, Machiavelli, Hobbes, Locke, Rousseau, uh, Marx, whatever they are, say, no. It's really, you know, how we look at the world and nature interacts and so on, how we look at things. And then later, no, it's science. 
So Durkheim says we have different ways of looking. So all of them are rational. And if you're religious, it should be God who made everything. Philosophy, it's also rational. No, this is how I look at things. Science say, this is also rational. This is how I look at things. That's why how we look at things in the past, it's witchcraft. I'm sick because somebody put a spell on me. Somebody had a black magic. See, that's a bad word that they use, right? They use of color. Like, why? And then science, this course, this is the latest now. So if you're doing uh, interpretive analysis, you look at these courses. Okay. Uh, okay, in conclusion, this is like one chart of everything, which I have just said. Okay. You can get the part when you want. What is not nature is culture. And then there are different fields, so look at it. And then a culture differs whether you conform to the dominant class or not, the power group, so your conflict. And then you can look at the individual level. And then political economy, you cannot separate culture from politics and the economy. History, culture changes. Culture is not static. Anthropology says everything is culture, everything that's not in society. So in a nutshell, that's what I just said. This is my own framework that needs a whole session to discuss. And culture is there, but I won't discuss it. Okay, and I don't know how to put that on a piece of paper. It has to move around. <laughs> <laughs> or else it doesn't work. Okay, so as we are adult uh, educators and learners, we have to be careful when we use the word culture. Uh, sometimes we use it to mean, again, uh, people of color, like brown, like me. That's not culture. Uh, that, that's my color. Culture is what I do. But maybe people of some color, like me, brown, are expected to do certain things, but then that you fall prey to stereotyping. Be, again, if you're the only one in class, people will ask you, okay, since you are brown, why don't you tell the class what is like, I don't represent all Asians, right? Uh, but professors are well-meaning, like they don't know, I get hurt, like, I don't represent Asia, like, excuse me. <laughs> oh, okay. Of course, I don't say that to my professors. <laughs> okay, so we have to have all of these views and be careful of othering. Okay. And if we stereotype people like Hofstede did, that we could become racist without knowing it by calling people, oh, since you are from this part, you must be collectivist. There are many individualists in other cultures, in other countries too. Okay. So by showing you the different perspective, we're just saying be careful of the dangers of stereotyping when we use the word culture. Define what perspective are you using, and then go from there. If you want to go off stage, fine. Okay, but there's a lot of dangers there. Okay, thank you. Okay. <laughs> so, more time. I know it's your session. What time? Your eleven fifteen. Yeah. Okay. Will you give us one minute? Yeah. Yeah. Any questions? Yes. Yeah. Because in the dialectical thinking in the Western world, especially Europe, when you write, they expected you to write dialectically, it's one and the other. So it's very easy. Okay? Edward Say wrote about Orientalism and post-colonialism, says this is the danger in the West. We like to show us and them. And therefore it's easy to love that framework. But it's prevailed. It's, it, yeah. Because it's easy to accept. It's us and them. But there are many people who are critically just no, 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 it's not just us and them. And not all brown people are the same. Not all men are the same. It seems like that at least just common sense, no matter what they do. To us, you're more friends. I think most people are not like that. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, okay. So you want to just write the answer to me and send it to me.
I really like some of your points. It's a really great book. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you.